Okay. Thank you for the question. And thank you all for having me here, and thank you all for coming out on a um, Saturday afternoon and participating. So my name is Benjamin Lang. I've, uh, I'm very familiar with District 3. I've lived in District 3 uh, for 42 years. Comment on my age, I suppose. Um, I've uh, uh, an MA, an MS in education, teaching credential and administrative credential. I have 25 years experience as a classroom teacher and an administrator. Uh, as a school board member, I will represent District 3 professionally reliably. I will be child-centered and classroom-centered. Um, I will work, it's, and, and being on the school board to me is more than just casting the right vote. It's about building consensus. And um, I will work to build consensus on the school board, the superintendent, and the community at large. Um, I'm not a ideologue. I'm not someone who's going to embrace large conspiracy, political conspiracy theories and try to bring those to the board. I'm someone who is child-centered, classroom-centered, and um, work for the students of Oakland. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, our next question is from Lacey. Hi, uh, my name is Lacey Abdul. I'm the CEO of the Board of Education and Mentor and Commissioner. Uh, my question for you is Okay. Thank you for the question. Um, I've, uh, as I mentioned in the previous question, I've worked with uh, education in district three for 42 years. Um, I have, uh, as I mentioned in the previous question, I've worked with uh, in education for 25 years, and I've had uh, the occasion during those 25 years to be a person who was on a committee building uh, strategic plans for school districts. And strategic plans are, is, a, is a well, strategic planning process is a very powerful process. And it involves the community, administrators, teachers, students, everybody. And the strategic plan for a district becomes something of a, if you will, it's analogous to a constitution for a country. And a constitution is not something that's written in stone. I believe it's a, a living document. And so building a strategic plan, which our district has, and can, uh, sticking to that strategic plan, and uh, keeping that as our guiding principle is would be very important to me. Um, the equity pledge within the school district, um, a little bit closer, thank you. So I'm not accustomed to microphones, so I apologize for that. Is uh, the equity pledge for the district, I think was a very bold move. I think it was a, it was a strategic move. The um, strategic pledge, the um, equity pledge addresses some division within the community, and that division is something that we're, usually it centers around the district schools versus the charter schools in our district, and the um, the um, equity pledge addresses that directly. The only issue that I have with the equity pledge is that I think that it should really have more teeth involved in it. Um, for those of you who've read the um, um, the grand jury report that came out recently on uh, charter schools within Oakland, uh, they were very positive about the equity pledge, and they even went so far as to say that the equity pledge should be enforced into um, to the degree that it would um, either not if if a dis if a charter school was not committed to it, then they would not have their charter approved. And if they came up for renewal and they were not uh, committed to the equity pledge, then it would be, um, the, there would be, it should be serious consideration to a non-renewal of the charter. Um, there's uh, another priority that I would bring to this, that's uh, to the district, and that would be a building consensus with labor within the district. Um, there are, it, and it's, it's so much more, and we'll get into that, I think, in some of the upcoming questions, but there, there's so much more than just pay uh, that's involved in the labor unions. There's uh, the seniority assignment system. There's so many things that um, should be addressed as a priority for the district in, in uh, negotiating with labor. Uh, thank you. Next question is Ruthie Hopkins. Hi, I'm Ruth Jones, I teach at Edinburgh Middle School, and I'm one of the co-policy fellows, and 
uh, I'm Kyle Swingin. I'm a teacher at Oakland International High School, and I was uh, also a teacher policy fellow for this past year. We believe that effective teaching matters. We fought for the teacher growth and development system, a comprehensive teacher support system to help educators improve their practice. The Go Teacher Policy Fellows advocate for improved early career supports for new teachers and career pathways for more experienced teachers. During the last school board elections and the OUSD OEA negotiations last year, we advocated that, teach, that increasing teacher compensation has to be among our top priorities. But there's still much more to do in this area. Year after year, about 20% of OUSD teachers are in their first or second years of teaching, which is double the rate of most neighboring districts. We can't afford that level of turnover, especially in the face of a dire teacher shortage. We need better to support our educators so they can better serve our students. We will have four minutes to answer the following question. In addition to increased pay, whichever candidate supports, what are the best ways to increase student access to effective teaching? What will you specifically do as a board member to make effective teaching a true priority? Thank you for the question. Um, this is a four minute question. So the, um, I recently went to a workshop that was, uh, the topic was how to attract and retain quality educators in Oakland. And it was, uh, well, it was not all that surprising to me, but the number one challenge that teachers have, new teachers coming to this district and staying in this district is, surprise, it's housing. This is an incredibly expensive place to live. And um, of course we support, I think every candidate supports, as you mentioned, uh, supports increased pay and that would help some, but it's not enough. There are creative solutions to these. There's creative solutions that other districts have done. Um, San Francisco has looked at you know, um, arrangements in their, their rent control uh, laws and um, eviction control laws and so forth to support uh, teachers in the district. Um, one program that I had some direct uh, experience with was in the Arenda District where a new housing development came in and part of the negotiations with Pulte Homes Development was that a certain percent of those homes had to be made available to teachers in that school district at a substantially reduced rate. And I'm happy to report that a few years later, once that uh, housing development was completed, that every one of those homes were purchased by teachers within that district. So those are just a couple of examples that we can address uh, the issue about housing for teachers. Um, another uh, a point, is, another issue would be, I think, was um, allowing principals to build their own teams. Uh, principals uh, know what their needs are in their schools and they know what the needs of the community and the students are and giving them the leeway to choose their own team without the restriction of seniority rules in that I think would be a key element to work toward in the um, uh, with negotiations with labor um, another uh, point I'd like to make is that there's um, I really believe in Oakland, Oaklanders for Oakland and Oakland for Oaklanders. There's uh, the TTO program, for example, the Teach Tomorrow Oakland. I was so excited about that program. Excellent program. Let's pull from our community. Let's build educators from our community. Let's advance people who are interested in moving beyond the classroom into administration. Let's support that. And let's try to pull from within. Thank you. Our next question, uh, Good afternoon. My name is Autumn McDonald, and I am on the uh, Go Leadership Council. I'm also the parent of two future uh, open school students. Uh, the power of community is one of, of Go's core values. It is the foundation on which long-lasting change is built. We believe that school communities should hold decision-making authority over their staffing, program, and budget. When OUSD granted school communities more of these freedoms in the mid-2000s, we saw tremendous, persistent academic and cultural influence. You will have four minutes to answer the following question. I will need two statements to you. One, 
I believe that schools should have decision-making authority over their operations. <coughs> I believe that the central office should manage most decisions in the district. Which of these statements best describes your opinions on district school governance? And what do you see as the implications for schools, families, and teachers? Please specifically address the areas of staffing, program, and budget in your response. Thank you. Um, well, I've already alluded to that in the previous question that um, as one of the my former superintendents that I used to work with very closely uh, used to always remind me and say, Ben, so the principals are our fighter pilots. And the principal, I think, is like the key position within the district. Um, principals um, know their communities, they know their schools, they know their students, and they should be allowed to build their own teams uh, based on their needs and their programs. And um, so, um, so definitely statement number one <laughs> on that one, yes and yes. Um, another area would be site-based budgeting. Um, I, um, I, was a, I was a teacher in Oakland many years ago when we did have site-based budgeting, and uh, I saw it work, I saw it work right. There's, there's two types of faculty meetings um, as a teacher in a school. You come in and the principal goes, well, now the district wants us to do this, and so we've got to do this, and everybody just takes a big sigh. There's another faculty meeting where we, the principal comes in and says, we have, we have some issues to deal with here. This is what's happening. These are community concerns. And the staff and the principal get together and through a collaboration process and with being control over their own budget, they're able to address specific concerns of their school and their community. Um, an area where I do have a little bit, I'm kind of leaning a little bit in the other direction, um, is the facilities. Um, I know that principals want to put, and parents and everybody, teachers, want to put the money where it is the best that's in the classroom. And my concern is, is that with a principal or a school that has complete control over their facility, that they will be tempted to stretch the budget to improve the classroom to, um, at the expense of the safety of the facility. So um, I, I do kind of lean a little bit more kind of the district uh, direction when it comes to facilities. I think we've got to have uh, safe, uh, healthy facilities for the students to live in, and there's got to be consistency with that throughout the district. So I hope I answered your question well. Thank you. Next question is from Danielle. Good afternoon, Ben Lang. I'm a parent of this Kate Hospital, apparently here with Night and 